Hi, my name is Leila May, and today I'm going to give you a tour of our Basel. Our Basel is one of the biggest fairs in the world. It's originated in Basel, Switzerland, and it's kind of traveling all over the place. Now it's in Miami, it's in Hong Kong, and I'm in the one in Miami. It usually happens in the beginning of December, when it's nice and warm in Miami. And it's enormous on the scale. It's, it's actually bigger than the Basel in Switzerland. And let's go, check it out. entering the fair. So Art Basel brings one of the biggest galleries from all over the world to showcase their art. So some of them are working with living artists like Kunz Gagosian and the mega stars of our time. This is it the famous banana when the artist just put a batch a banana with tape and decided it's a piece of art. So now everyone's taking a picture of it and taking pictures with it. Amazing. I'm gonna do the same. This is my spirit animal. Now we're entering the mega device, the Gavossi. Apparently our girl Rihanna has one of those and she was given this one for Christmas a few years ago. No one knows how much is this one, but if you drop by a gift shop nearby, I'm pretty sure you can buy one for 15 bucks. One of Genoa's kind of fallen. Garbage or piece of art? Both? Excellent. Here's Joanne Mitchell. I think she's an American, but she's one of the most successful female artists. And her work goes for um, a million to three or four million dollars. And this is a really gorgeous painting. Oh, by the way, she used to be a wife of Rio Powell. He's a Canadian artist from Montreal, and they used to live together at some point. And I think it kind of influenced the way she uses uh, blue, like in my mind. But I might be really wrong, and this is the wrong period. After the six, eight street women everywhere, you can see Helen Frankenthaler and her peer, Gottlieb. Here's a brand gallery, Picasso's, Nero's, Calder. So I'm just walking to Venetian, it's a secondary dealer, but he makes huge shows. For example, he recently made a show for Frank Stella. He spent half a million dollars just to play a little bit of Stella, Rosenstein, Warhol, Basqua. I don't know this, those artists over there. There is Miro's gallery with Milton Ali and his uh, very gentle and very subtle paintings of, um, I don't know, sails, boats, I don't think so. A wonderful yeah, um, Kusama sculpture. Look at this sort of thing. I don't know what this is, but it is striking called Dirty Pool and I'm loving it. I need to research a bit more about the concept and the backing, the conceptual backing of this piece, but it looks incredible. Look your face. Hi, right now we're at Salon 94. It's one of the hottest galleries of now. Um, and it's competing with mega dealers like Face and Gagossi. And let's take a look what they're presenting. Really interesting figurative paintings, really um, energized brush stroke because you can see how it changes with the light and the reflections. And I wonder if Oh my goodness. <laughs> I guess that's cool. <laughs> Look at this purple madness and the lady in my shot. <laughs> This is the most popular display. Like a thousand people in front of it. Uh, I know nothing about these arts, but I think they're popular. So I'm at the Meridian, second floor of our Basel, and uh, this is the place where bigger dealers and galleries can showcase one of few artists that they would like to represent. And this is ginormous exhibition of very large scale pieces. So let's go through it. This is an artist I used to teach in Guelph, and he's using. For this installation, he took images from one room in one palace, cut out every single piece that represents white culture, and inserted uh, some element of black culture in it. So he's talking, he's having a dialogue how about oppression of blackness and how it can, uh, he as an artist can bring it back to, to the world. This is a piece by Tom Friedman. You can see a party where everyone is invited and trying to make it look that they're cool and they're socializing, but in reality, they're not. 
from the artist. Art for me is a context to slow the viewer's experience from their everyday life. This is the piece by Frank Bowling, and I think he uses Alitsky as an inspiration, but he also incorporates um, the silhouettes of Africa and the places that he personally finds connection with, and like Australia, that's relevant to his background, his history. And yeah, he's, this is the painting from the 70s. Oh my god. Hi, I think it's my fourth time or third time this week on our puzzle because I miss David Speaker. It's a very nice display. Um, Nevelson and um, early Noland. Diamond shape, I think it's called painting. And little coons at David Speaker. I think I'm pronouncing this right. I never can remember. He's one of the mega dealers. So it's Gagosian Pace and David Speaker. Um, he's based in New York and uh, he's representing coons. I think this is Albers over there and some color fields. Let's see what else he has. Okay, this is a piece by Anish Kapoor, one of the most influential um, Indian artists. And, um, he creates those illusionistic those spaces, those actually a sphere with a hole inside of it. But and it creates this incredible illusion. This is a very interesting piece by Angela La Cruz. Incredible Sean Scully over here. Wow, so one of this, like this in Venice. Okay, one of Sam Julian, this little sculpture. So Sam Julian, he was one of the only African American artists who was in colorful painting spectrum. Okay, the father of minimalism, Donald Judd, who wrote a lot of backing, conceptual backing, conceptual essays to make people understand what his art is really about and he usually makes creates those uh, stacks of different boxes okay i'm seeing more and more william de Kooning, but his sculpture not his paintings uh, william de Kooning was an early immigrant from um, somewhere in germany i don't remember where exactly but uh, he came to america as a refugee with no money but he had a perfectly incredible education as an academical artist which brought him, he started introducing and playing with this idea of abstractionism and that Rothko was his contemporary. So that's what he came up with. These are always fun, these are living work. It's Meg Webster. But the idea is they grow and develop by themselves and sometimes the artist replaces when um, the items die. It's my third day at the fair and it's quiet for once. It's so weird. This is an ever-changing Mirror work by Jenny Hain. Um, it's really fun. Results for that show. Helio Ticcio, I think he's one of the most influential, influential um, South American artists, and he did happenings in early uh, 70s. And he was great in boxing, but uh, initially he's recreating this uh, living conditions of people who are underprivileged and his work is quite stunning. A kitsch here. Well, why not? There's also like this. No. <laughs> I sort of love the mess, but I'm not sure if I would like to leave this piece in my living room. Look at this piece. Look at the details and the beatings. Wow, it's really well Instagrammable. I love this piece. It's really rebel like. But I wonder who did this one. Oh, they're glazed. Oh no, they're just in plastic cover. Yeah, these are the Haas brothers, and they've been to their press exhibition a couple years ago. Really, really cute stuff.